The time is 4.30, and this is WKYT This Morning. Hurricane Matthew is getting closer to the United States. We'll tell you what is being done to try to get people to safety. Lexington police are putting out a warning to help protect you from car thefts, which they say is now a big problem. And Kentucky House Speaker Greg Stumbo is now starting an investigation committee to see if Governor Matt Bevan has done anything illegal. We'll have that in your local weather forecast all next on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. So good to have you here on WKYT as we start off your Thursday. The weekend's a little closer. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. It's already October 6th, and you know what? This has been a fantastic week weather-wise, but we can't help but keep an eye on Hurricane Matthew. Got to watch that, and, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, watching our own uh, weather as we approach uh, the weekend and opening day at Keeneland. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, Hurricane Matthew over the Bahamas at this moment, and that's heading toward Florida, so it's going to take Take its own sweet time to actually get there. I'd expect it to actually arrive, maybe even hitting land there in Florida later on tonight. We'll see how that works out, but hopefully it'll stay offshore just a bit. No direct impact to our weather, Defender Radar Network. Everything looks good out there early this morning. We're not seeing any problems whatsoever, and temperatures are there in the 50s and 60s. We're at 56 now in London and Laurel County, and that goes for Rock Castle County. Work your way back toward Pulaski County. All looks well. We're at 60 degrees there in Franklin County, so things are looking just fine. I don't see much of an issue of fog either. Now, as you travel in towards your afternoon, uh, just like yesterday, we can't roll out a sprinkle, but for the most part, it's just about the warmth over there uh, into the afternoon. So it, it's really just another nice day in store, still well above average. You got to remember, average is 72 degrees, and we're holding on to the 80s as we get into your afternoon. Then the chances of rain increase toward the weekend, but they're not great chances. I'm going to show you that who I expect to have the better opportunity coming up in a few minutes. All right, let's get into the news this morning, and it is, of course, weather related mm -hmm. because of millions of people in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. They're bracing for Hurricane Matthew. The Category 3 storm is pounding the Bahamas right now, and it's expected to regain strength as it moves toward the eastern seaboard. Forecasters say the first major hurricane to hit Florida in 11 years could bring heavy rain and Powerful winds. Marley Hall has the latest. As Hurricane Matthew roared through the Bahamas, parts of Florida became a ghost town. Don't become a victim. Make sure you get out and get out tonight. People along the East Coast began heeding evacuation warnings yesterday, flocking to gas stations to fill up. I've driven around looking for gas, and their gas stations haven't had any gas. As others cleared store shelves and boarded up their properties, this boater in Daytona Beach decided to move further inland. We've ridden out a lot of storms in the past, but this one I think will be much more dramatic. Hurricane Matthew is expected to regain strength over the next few hours. Officials say people along the Florida coast should begin feeling its effects by tonight. We'll start feeling tropical storm force winds, and we potentially could feel hurricane force winds too for an extended period of time. The storm has already left behind a path of destruction in Haiti and Cuba. Flattening homes, flooding streets, and knocking out power. The Coast Guard is already warning beachgoers to stay out of the water. It's definitely not the good time to go out to the surf. Be curious, be adventurous. Matthew is expected to bring dangerous storm surge and beach erosion to Georgia and South Carolina tomorrow before moving out to sea this weekend. Marley Hall, CBS News, Daytona Beach, Florida. So far, Hurricane Matthew is being blamed for at least 25 deaths in the Caribbean. Here in Kentucky, some people are changing their travel plans to the southeast because of the hurricane. Others decided to go on their trips despite the dangerous storm. WKYT's Monique Blair talked to some people out at Bluegrass Airport who were catching a flight to Florida. Caroline Murphy only wanted one thing for her birthday this Saturday. She wanted to wake up in the place where dreams come true. Disney World. She was very surprised, and hopefully, she's going to have a great 17th birthday. But now, Caroline, her family, and several friends face the chance of feeling the impact Hurricane Matthew is expected to bring to the Sunshine State. We bought rain jackets today, so we're going to make the best of it. Caroline and her family were not the only people who chose to take their chances and brave the storm. I watched as a steady stream of people tonight made their way here through the Allegiant Line, the last flight of the night through this airline, making their way straight for Orlando. 
this is when my reservations are, so I'm heading down there to be evacuated. <laughs> Two flights leaving Lexington headed to Fort Lauderdale and Orlando tomorrow have been canceled, along with a flight from Fort Lauderdale to Lexington. So AAA advises travelers to do their research if they plan to travel in the next few days. You might go ahead and call your destination places and ask them, should I still come and what's your cancellation policy? And for those who have decided to follow through with their vacation plans anyway, they say they will just hope for the best. Well, luckily we have some friends that live there, so a little bit inland, so I'm just going to their house to ride it out and then hopefully get back to the beach by Saturday. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. And the American Red Cross is sending a team from Kentucky to parts of the southeast. According to the Courier Journal, four Red Cross workers from Louisville and one from Lexington will be heading to the Carolinas or Florida very soon. They'll be preparing shelters and help with other relief efforts. Other news now this morning. It is a crime that Lexington police say in most cases can easily be prevented. But they say so far this year, they've seen a large increase in the number of cars reported stolen. Now they're warning you about it so you can take steps to protect your car. WKYT's Garrett Weimer has the story. Tanya Jenkins knows what it's like. The glove compartment was open and the middle dash was open and there were things that they could have taken and uh, they didn't. Turns out Jenkins is a lucky one. Police say cars are being broken into all over the city and hundreds are even stolen. As a citizen of Fayette County, you need to safeguard your own things just with using common sense and something as simple as locking a car door. Police say 262 cars were reported stolen in the past three months. That's nearly 100 more cases than the same period last year. Fewer cars were broken into in those three months compared to 2015, but the total spiked in September. Police worked more than 300 cases. Of the 262 cars reported stolen, police say thieves had keys to them in 110 of those cases. It highlights a fact police want you to remember that crimes like these can often be prevented. Uh, and not with a hyper paranoia vigilance, but just in the sense of keeping your keys in a safe place. My dad was a policeman, and if he thought I left my keys in the car, he would be like, well, you know what? You deserve to get your car stolen. <laughs> That's exactly what he would say. Jenkins says she locks her car and takes her keys with her, so she's not an easy target like so many others. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police say lock your doors, take any valuables, including your keys, with you. And with cold weather coming, police also say you shouldn't idle your car to warm it up if you're not in it. State police are warning for people in Madison County after what they're calling a suspicious encounter. They say around 11 o'clock yesterday morning, a 17-year-old girl claimed a man in his 60s approached her at a lake in the Heron Landing subdivision off Speedwell Road. That's near Richmond. The teenager claims the man got out of his car, opened the back door, then told her he did not want to hurt her. At that point, the teenager ran away, and police say the man drove off. Police haven't found the man. They say he's white, around six foot two, with salt and pepper hair, weighing 160 pounds, with wire framed glasses. Police say he drove a small, dull red car and could have been a Nissan Sentra. Kentucky House Speaker Greg Stumbo says he is forming an investigative committee focused on Governor Matt Bevan. Stumbo says the committee will look into what he called potentially illegal actions by the governor. Among them, a lawmaker's claim that Governor Bevan threatened him in a voicemail. Stumbo says five state House members will make up that committee. I can't sit by and allow these serious matters to go. Unlooked at. Very, very, very desperate people pull stunts like Speaker Stumbo just did. The governor's office says he did nothing wrong. Stumbo says that this is a fact finding committee, not an impeachment committee, but he says depending on its findings, criminal charges could be filed. WKYT this morning on the air with all the latest. We're just getting started. It is rolling toward 440 on your Thursday. Coming up, our own Sam Dick and Amber Philpot are getting a special honor and a chance to share their own stories. That story is coming right up after Micah's forecast. We're looking at Hurricane Matthew down toward the Bahamas, right over the Bahamas as we speak. And it's heading up toward Florida. How is this going to affect our weekend front? We'll have that coming up. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris.
We are in the 60s and 50s once again this morning. The yesterday morning is exactly what we're going to be going through this morning. So 50s down south, 60s central and northern zones. It's just the way it's going to be this morning with not so much any, any fog issues. Uh, but watch out for just some patchy fog here and there. London Corbin area looks good. Williamsburg down south, all the way into Whitley County, head towards the Jellicoe Mountain. I haven't heard of any issues. More head out toward Lakeview Heights, and then make your way back uh, I-64 all the way to Lexington and Frankfort. Things are looking pretty good across Montgomery Bath, and also working your way through Clark County. So things are looking fine this morning. How about the afternoon? Well, the afternoon is pretty much the same. 82. That's where we finished off yesterday, and where we finished off the day before. So these days. Multiple days in a row that we're sitting there in the lower 80s with a mixture of sun and clouds, and just can't rule out a sprinkle or two. Just don't be surprised if you get a few drops over your head. No thunderstorms, nothing of heavy rain. You're not going to get phased by any of this. Off toward the evening hours, heading out to the ball fields. It looks pretty good right there around 76 degrees. Let's talk about your Keeneland forecast. Head towards your day tomorrow. Pretty nice day. It's going to be right around 79 degrees. Very nice. We'll take that. But it's going to change big time as we head throughout your weekend. The front arrives Saturday morning. It'll slide on through. And remember, this is a mainly dry front that will bring us much cooler conditions. So we go from 79 to 64 on Saturday. Remember, that's your afternoon temperature. So if you're heading out there, uh, maybe tailgating or whatnot, that's going to be in the 50s. That is going to be a little bit chilly. Head off towards your Sunday is pretty much the same story. So the weekend forecast is totally different than Friday. The weekend forecast, you can wear your fall clothes. On Friday, it's more of still your summer clothes because it's going to be not so much warm, but it's going to feel all right. Seven day forecast. Let's look at it and see what's going on the next few days. Remember that slightest chance of rain off towards your weekend, maybe for the eastern zones, but for the rest of us, actually looks pretty good. Off toward next week, I still don't see a good chance of rain. But temperatures in the 60s and 70s. That's actually average for this time of year, lower 70s, so we'll take that. Yeah. Not a bad forecast. Yeah, it looks pretty good, and it, as we keep that eye on what's mm -hmm. going on elsewhere. No complaints here. <laughs> right. 445 our time this morning. Our evening news team got a special honor getting to appear in the October edition of Tops in Lexington magazine. Sam Dick is one of the cover models of the inspiration. <laughs> issue of the magazine. It shows other cancer survivors like Sam sharing their stories. And Amber is featured in an article about life in the news business. Congratulations to both Sam and Amber. Very deserving for both of them. And it is funny they get to share their own stories. Right. They're used to sharing other people's <laughs> stories, but now you get to hear about them yeah. for a change. Learn a little bit more about them. Great mm -hmm. folks. All right, WKYT this morning on the air with the latest on your Thursday. And more news is coming right up in just a moment. Well, as they say, dogs are a man's best friend, and that phrase is very true. For a Lexington boy injured in a shooting. That story is coming right up after the break. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. The time now is 448. A Democratic presidential candidate has won Pennsylvania in the last six elections. Recent polls give Hillary Clinton the edge, but it is still a battleground state. Weijia Jang takes a look now and took a little road trip across the state and found this year the party lines may be blurred. Parts of Pennsylvania are undeniably Hillary Clinton country. At this Philadelphia farmer's market, die-hard Democrats crave the chance to cast their ballots. Very passionate. I'll be out there as soon as the polls open. In 2008, 83% of the vote in this city went to President Obama, 85% in 2012. Clinton hopes the same turnout will help her clinch the state's 20 electoral votes. Hillary is the one that's going to make the world go around. At least we'll have Medicare. She will make the best president. She's been in the politics and that, you know, for some years now. And that. He just got in. But as the cityscapes fade along the Pennsylvania turnpike, so does Clinton's staunch support, while signs of Donald Trump territory emerge. We met Mark Mazaris at a Johnstown steel mill turned scrapyard where he works. 25 years ago, this place was making wheels and stuff, you know, metal and all that. Now it's ghost. It's a ghost town. Yeah. The steel industry employed about 18,000 people here at its peak in the 1950s. Foreign competition and new technology wiped out those jobs, and the community has yet to recover. Mazaris thinks Trump can change that. At least he wants to try to bring jobs back to America instead of shipping them out and, you know, letting them build stuff overseas. JWF Industries is one of the few steel factories still operating in town. 
CEO Bill Palachek says his workers believe Trump will protect U.S. manufacturing. How many of your employees are registered Democrats? Roughly 75 percent are registered Democrats. And how many of them are voting for Donald Trump? Uh, it's about 90 percent. A loyal base has helped the Democrats win Pennsylvania since 1992, but many voters told us this year they're looking at the candidate, not the party. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Investigators now claim a contractor for the National Security Agency stole government secrets. Harold Martin III was arrested last month. They say he admitted stealing classified computer codes that he knew were top secret. Investigators say some of the NSA's highly sensitive secrets about its cyber tools ended up online because of that theft. Martin's wife says she believes in her husband. I am standing by my husband, that I love him very much. and. Um, you know, he's a good man. Inside Martin's home, investigators say they found hard copy documents and digital information from the NSA stored on multiple devices. If convicted, he could receive more than 10 years in prison. A man says his replacement Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phone caused some frightening moments on a Southwest Airlines plane in Louisville. Brian Green says seconds after he powered down his phone, it started smoking in his pocket. He threw it to the floor, worried it would explode. Now, as a precaution, the plane was evacuated. Thankfully, no one was injured and the phone did not explode or catch fire. Green says he had the original Galaxy Note 7 but took it back to the store after Samsung recalled it because of the risk of explosions and fires. He said he received the replacement phone, which Samsung claimed would be much safer just a few weeks ago. I'd never powered the phone down. This was the first time I'd powered it down. Went to the movies the other day and I just muted it, of course, but I hadn't powered it down. So I did everything I was supposed to. The plane was still at the gate when the phone started smoking. The flight to Baltimore was canceled. New this morning, the Kentucky Board of Education has agreed to study the concept of public charter schools. The decision came during the board's meeting in Frankfurt. Kentucky is one of seven states that does not have legislation allowing charter schools. The board will be studying charter schools during a special meeting next month. Outside organizations run charter schools, but they are publicly funded and open to any student. A Lexington boy injured in a shooting more than a year ago now has a service dog to help him. Antonio Reese is now 11 years old. His family says he had multiple surgeries and has come a long way since being shot while riding in his family's SUV. But the family says Antonio needed a service dog to help in his recovery. So people in the community helped raise the $22,000 needed for the family to get a dog named Alice. The family says the dog gets trained to sense when something is wrong with Antonio, and the dog will then alert the family about that. So that's a fantastic update to that story. It is. Uh, it's, uh, right. Encouraging. 4.53 our time, 7 before 5 on WKYT This Morning. And in just a moment, we'll be right back to look at some of the stories our news team is working on for you right now. And we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming right up. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. 4.57 is our time, rolling toward 5 o'clock on your Thursday. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Hurricane Matthew is slowly making its way toward the U.S. after hitting Haiti and Jamaica earlier in the week. We'll have an update for you on where the storm is now and where it's likely to be headed in the next 24 hours. And, of course, the response as well, which is uh, going to re require a lot of teamwork in this country. You so know? we'll still yeah. have a lot more to come on that. But for now, let's check in with Micah on our local forecast. Yeah, it's looking pretty good out there. I'm not seeing many issues. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. And we go through your day. Pretty nice start. It's going to be exactly like what you expected or what you had yesterday is what you can expect this morning. 50s, 60s, pretty nice off towards your afternoon, above average, well above average, about 10 degrees. But we drop it about 10 degrees below average there for the weekend. If you're about to leave, have a good morning. If not, stick around. We'll have much more on that forecast coming up.